Hi, this is Kendra over at Pencil and Pigment. And today I wanted to talk about my favorite watercolor supplies. <clears throat> because it's World Watercolor Month. And I thought maybe some of this would give you some ideas. And just share with you, I don't know, some of the things I have. My thought process on some of this. And, uh, I don't know. Just for fun. Okay, so these are my two main palettes. This one is porcelain. I highly recommend porcelain for watercolor. This one is obviously plastic. It's a cheap $1 throwaway. Um, watercolor stains plastic, but if you use a magic eraser, um, you can keep repurposing it. So those are kind of my two main palettes. These are my paint brushes. And I keep saying work bigger and I never do. I keep getting smaller. So these are my bigger brushes. These are my teeny tiny detail brushes. This is most of them. And then these are my throwaway craft brushes. So I'm constantly replacing these um, when I'm doing like, well, exterior signs with polyurethane and house paint and stuff. And always a pipette. But these are kind of my junk my junk ones. These are kind of for stenciling. Anyways, those are my brushes. They're stained because I use them. And I do have some makeup brushes in there. I have tried using makeup brushes as paint brushes. And I've had mixed results with that. So I guess just keep that in mind. This is my main watercolor. A schminky 36 pan, which the pans are always moving around. And I added a gold and silver. Um, yeah, this is my main one, and as I go through colors, I've replaced them. So I replaced May Green several times. Really like my green, and I'll always have one of those in my collection. Now I've spoken about this is my Windsor Newton Cotman. I added a sticker. Here's the little testing strip I made. And I take this for traveling, backpacking. Um, my kids actually own these as well because um, Crayolas are really chalky and they don't encourage mixing and making new colors. So this is just a fun travel set that I throw in my backpack when we go camping. <laughs> Here is my green leaf and blueberry. Um, if you've seen that video, you know that the humidity isn't kind to hand process watercolors. So I think the next, once I use all these up, I will try a different set from a different local company for handmade watercolors because I like having granulated watercolors. I just, um, the preservatives in this one, uh, they have mold. So I think if I scrape a layer, they're still usable, but not for projects or commissions or gifts. Here is a tin, and Core made a really cool tin that has wells in the lid if you want to use it as a mixing tray. These are my one-off tubes that I have because I just use the colors so much. So I have a gouache. I also have a, um, a permanent white on my desk. I didn't bring it over. That's a titanium. That's a uh, Daniel, it's a Daniel Smith white. So I have a couple whites and then I have lots of Prussian green for projects. And then I have the keys because these are metal tubes so it's hard for me to squeeze them out. And then my uh, Dioxine purple which is a super, super, super dark purple and I have that in two versions. I have the quart and I have, um, this one looks like a M. Graham. I just have to be careful with some of the engrams. I have a lot of trouble with them drying. So, and then here is my ultramarine violet deep. So I have a, I have a few purples, and I really like, I really like purple as a shadow. So that's why I have so much purple. I just think shadows shouldn't be gray. And here's some that came originally with this set that I kept. This is quinacridone magenta. And that one's fine. And this one is cobalt teal, and that one's okay. It doesn't have a huge range within the color, but 
it's fun. And then here is the uh, M. Graham Terra Rosa. And that is a beautiful color. So if you are constantly mixing and mixing and mixing the same color over and over and over again, maybe consider making a tube. It'll save you a lot of time. And the other watercolors I've used up, so I haven't replaced them because I still have so many. This is a Fiber Castell foldable water cup with divots you can put brushes on it. And this one I clean with a magic eraser too. And I use this for travel because it's super lightweight and it folds and it's compact. Here's my baby food jar. I always use that for water. And then this is my brush cleaner. And I use this brand because it's plastic. Anything metal here kind of rusts because of the moisture. But I have this in several sizes. I have my uh, masking fluid, which smells horrific if you know about masking fluid. I have my travel water cups. And this one works like a pipette, and this is just an old one I have from something else. I bought one of these. It's a brush cleaner for makeup. This one's called Brush Egg, and obviously I keep forgetting to use it, but for larger brushes, I thought it might work. Let's see. And then I have a set of 12 um, watercolor pencils, which you can see I've hardly use those from Crown Josh. But I have in here their museum aquarelle, which is, these are expensive. These are three to four dollars a piece. I really, really love these. These are absolutely beautiful. They, they blend so well. Um, if you love illustration, but you're kind of wary about watercolor, I would say start with a watercolor pencil. You'll feel really comfortable with that. I have sponges. I hardly ever use my sponges anymore, but I used to. Here's my travel cleaning brush set. And this is sort of my Blick. Dick Blick makes really nice um, bags that are water. They're waterproof. Here are empty pans, and I'll show you why I have those. Here's my travel brush set. This one clips on to your watercolor notebook, and I've used this several times. This is a really nice double water barrel, and this is the smallest mister you'll ever see for activating your watercolor. And infinitely more sponges. Now. The other thing I have are some pans, and this is just a really old tin I own. And these are the Kiritake, the Gansai Tabby, and these are the colors I use. I use a lot of earth tones, definitely more on the cooler side, so blues, greens, purples. Um, I will keep any purple you hand me, just because, again, I use a lot of purple. And when I know what I like, I know what I like. So there is my little tester for that. But for the most part, I don't... It's a fine line, I think, from purchasing something and trying something new to making sure you use all your stuff. So I see a lot of temptation to, ooh, I want to try one of those or I'll just get a pan of that or a small tube of that and try that out. But then if I don't use it, it just sits there and it feels like a waste. So I kind of make sure I have a bin. I have a bin for everything. And as long as it fits in the bin, I'm good. So if I want to have more art supplies, I make sure that I use up what I have first. I don't, I don't want to waste anything. And I've tried watercolor pens and I didn't really care for them. I just was never drawn to them. Um, and ironically. So this is the bulk of my watercolor supplies. And yeah, it's, it's not a whole lot. 
or it is. It's relative to what you own. Um, I hope this gives you a couple ideas. Again, if you're not comfortable with watercolor, I would say, but you like to draw, I would say start with watercolor pencil. Um, the Windsor Newton Cotman is a great beginner set. And yeah, maybe see if you can swap and trade. Gently use stuff so nothing goes to waste with a fellow creator. That might be a fun way to try new things. And if you don't like it, pass it along or send it back. All right, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.